Hello everyone, it's Professor Rako here, and uh, today we are going to continue on with our uh, cash and receivables chapter. Uh, our last two videos focus on the accounting for uh, notes when they're not issued at face value. So there's two types that we're going to look at. Uh, the first one is zero interest bearing, meaning there's not an interest rate, and the second one is going to be uh, when there is an interest rate. So zero interest rate, zero interest bearing notes, just means the rate is not explicitly stated. Uh, on the note. Okay, so there's not a set interest rate that the uh, interest will accrue at. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to determine the present value of the note. So anytime you see present value, you should be thinking um, I need to use my financial calculator to calculate the present value or the uh, tables in the book to calculate my present value. All right, so the present value will be the amount that we actually loan out. All right, because we are the issuer here. We're, we're just going to assume we're loaning out some cash. Uh, to somebody and they'll sign a note. All right, so knowing the present value, okay, so that's what we just talked about, and the amount to be uh, paid back in the future allows us to determine an uh, implicit interest rate. All right, so the way this works is, and this is kind of the important sentence right here, is the difference between the present value, which is the amount loaned out, and the future value or the face value of the note is recorded as a discount and amortized to interest revenue over the life of the note. All right, so if you look at this first journal entry here, when a note is established, all right, so we're going to have the notes receivable. And look, this is going to be the face value. And this will be the present value. Let's just assume we're dealing with cash. We talked in the last video about the possible credits we could have here, but let's just assume we're loaning out some money. All right, so our credit would be the cash. All right, so notice this sentence right here, the first part of the difference between the present value all right, which we have the cash there and the future face value all right, is recorded as a discount. So this discount right here is the difference. OK, and then it says we are going to amortize to interest revenue over the life of the uh, note. So the entry to record interest revenue each period would be to reduce the discount. Because remember, we're amortizing that to interest revenue and then record uh, interest revenue that would go to our income statement. All right, so that's kind of the flow of things when you have a non-interest bearing note. Uh, so the discount on notes receivable is a contra asset to the note receivable, which means it reduces the uh, value of the note on the balance sheet. And, you know, if you look right here, if we're reducing it down to zero, that means at the end of the life of the note, the discount will be zero, which means the note will be at face value. Right. So we're going to use the effective interest method. OK. So that stuff, the effective interest method is something you'll see throughout uh, this intermediate uh, courses between your first and second intermediate, uh, especially when you get to investments and uh, like bonds payable and things like that, doing amortization tables for that and even leases to an extent and so forth. So you'll see effective interest pop up quite a bit for you. All right. So how do we go about doing that? All right. So the first thing we do here is we're going to compute interest revenue. Okay. So we're compute. So if you think up at the journal trip there above, we have a credit to interest revenue. We're going to compute that amount by multiplying the carrying value of the note receivable at the beginning of the period. Remember, carrying value uh, is going to be the uh, note receivable less the discount. OK, and we're going to multiply it by the effective interest rate. All right. So. Uh, how do we do? And then we're going to determine the discount or premium amortization. We, we have a discount up at the top here, and that's what we'll do in the problem as well. Um, we're going to determine that amount by comparing the interest revenue that we just calculated with the interest to be received, where the interest received is the face value of the note multiplied by the stated rate of the note. OK, uh, this amount will be zero for a zero interest bearing note. So this kind of goes for both types of notes. So when there is a stated rate on the note, which will be our next example, that's what we'll do. We're going to multiply those numbers together. When it's a zero uh, interest bearing note, it, the, the, uh, the amount will be zero. Therefore, the amortization will equal the interest revenue. And so if I scroll back up here, so this part right here, uh, this amount will be zero. So the discount, uh, the amortization will equal the interest revenue which is exactly what that says. All right, the amount we're amortizing equals the interest revenue, all right? So uh, let's look at an example here. So we've got a company, they loan money to another company and received a non-interest bearing note uh, with a 200,000 face value. Okay, so that's the face amount. So we know that's gonna be my debit to note receivable that is due on December 31st. 
So look, notice here. So this is my effective rate. The market rate, effective rate, that's all the same thing. So the market rate at that point in time is 12. Notice that's not the stated rate that we're paying interest at. This is a non-interest bearing note. There's no interest rate on the note itself, which means there's no cash payment for interest. Um, you, the interest is implied in the note. We'll, once we see some numbers, it'll make a little bit more sense. All right, so what is the present value of the note and the entry to record it? All right, so remember, when you're using a present value, I always encourage students to use the present uh, value, uh, financial calculator to do this because uh, it's so much quicker and so much easier than messing with all the tables. All right, so uh, if you have a financial calculator, you'll see these keys uh, usually kind of on one row. Uh, and I believe if you have the graphing calculators, uh, the, there's a present value uh section where you can do that although a lot of professors including myself won't allow students to use the graphing calculators on exams because they can program you know you can have the ability to program stuff into it all right so the future value okay is the two hundred thousand oops sorry two hundred thousand all right so when i'm doing this i always put numbers positive or negative as it is a cash flow to me okay so at the end of the life of the note i'm going to receive two hundred thousand dollars back when they pay it back to me all right, the number N represents the number of periods. So notice this one starts January 1st, 2015, ends at the end of 2016, so it's two years. The I represents the rate per period, all right? So each period is a year, so it's 12. Uh, the payment is zero. So if there was an interest payment, it would go there. But there is not an interest payment here, so we don't uh, have them. Because remember, there's not an interest payment because there's not an explicitly stated interest rate on the note. This is a non-interest bearing note. So when you run that through your calculator, you'll get a negative 159,439. Now look, it comes out as negative because that's the cat. That's going to be my credit to cash. It's a cash outflow, so it makes sense that it's a negative number here. All right, so my journal entry on January 1 of 15 would look like this. Now notice this is going to look. So I'm going to just go on and sketch it out. So note receivable, discount on note receivable, and our cash. All right, now I'm going to scroll back up here for a second and just notice we are doing this journal entry right here. That's our first, you know, it says when a note is established. Okay, well, that's exactly what we're doing here. And notice the face value will be the note receivable, the present value will be the cash, and the discount will be the difference. That's exactly what we're doing right here. All right, so we just said the uh, debit to faith, uh, notes receivable is the face value. The credit to cash is the present value, 159,439, and this is the difference. All right, so when we talk about implied interest, sometimes students struggle with that concept. What we're saying is, all right, so think about it here. We are loaning out, we are giving somebody 159,439. At the end of two years, they're going to pay us back 200,000. Okay, so we're giving them 159. They're giving us back 200 at the end of two years. So this difference is the implied interest. All right. So that's the implied interest. All right. So when it says that we're going to amortize this to interest revenue, that's what we're doing. I mean, that's the implied interest. So this will end up being recognized as interest revenue, the 40561 uh, over the life of the note. All right. So let's go over to the next page here and look at an amortization table. All right, so it says complete the effective interest uh, table for the note. All right, so when we start, notice this January 1, 15, that's the day we signed the note. Okay, the carrying value, remember carrying value equals note receivable 200 less the discount of that 40,000 number, and that gives me 159,439. All right, so there's nothing else. That's just us signing note. At the end of the first year, all right, we are going to record interest revenue. Okay, and remember how we said on the previous page. We are going to take the beginning of the period carrying value right here and multiply it times the market rate, which is 12%. All right, so 159,439 times 12% is 19,133. And remember, there's no interest received. There's not interest received because remember, this is it's a non-interest bearing note. All right, when we get to the next example, we will have interest here. All right, and then we said also on the previous page, because of that, since there's no interest received, the amortization amount will equal the interest revenue amount. And that was that second journal entry when we kind of uh, just sketched things out on the previous page. All right, so that brings my carrying value up to 178,572. Because think about what's happening here. The discount 
Let me just sketch this out over here. So the discount started at 40,561. This we just amortized this 19133 which means it's now 21,428. All right, now remember the definition here of carrying value. Carrying value is the note receivable, which is 200,000, less the discount, which is now 21,428, which gives me the 178 number right here. All right, now we take the 178 again, multiply it times the 12%, we get 21,428. So that's how much we're going to amortize. All right, so if I do 21,428 here, we now are at zero, but that's what we want because we're at the end of the life of the note. So we want that fully amortized. And this is now 200,000 because it's the definition is note receivable 200,000 less a discount of zero. So it's back up to its face value. All right. So the journal entries for each of these 1231.15, all we're doing here is recording the interest revenue. So we reduce the discount on note receivable by 19.133. That is that debit right there that we recorded and we have interest revenue so we still have interest revenue even though there's not an explicit interest rate remember we said it's implied and so that difference the forty thousand, will be recognized as interest revenue over the life of the note so at the end of uh, 12 31 16 we do the second amortization for the 21 4 2 8 and recognize interest revenue of 21 4 2 8 so once again, that is that debit. But then also on the last day, they pay us back. So we get the cash of 200000 And we close out the note, 200000 So that credit, so in our first entry, we had a debit for 200000 to the note. Now we have a credit. So this account is now zero as well. So we're at the end of the life of the note. My discount is now zero. My note receivable account is now zero. So we're good to go. We've accounted for everything uh, from start to finish. Okay. So this is a non-interest bearing note. So I've stressed this before. If you have a test question, you need to make sure you realize, is this non-interest bearing or is it interest bearing? The next example we're going to do, the next video will be an interest bearing note. So there will be some similarities, but uh, instead... When we get over there, we will have interest received because there's a stated rate on the note. Okay, so we'll talk about that in the next video. So make sure you tune into that and then come back and look at both of these so that you can kind of compare uh, and contrast, uh, you know, the two different styles and make sure you're ready to go uh, come test time. All right, so hopefully this helped a little bit with non-interest bearing notes, also called zero interest bearing notes. Uh, so make sure you tune into the next one and I'll see you then.